he's a decent player, but if you don't have that attitude, it's it's not going to work for you. And mm. he, I think, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I've never met the guy, but from what I've read about what he's what he's supposed to have said to journalists and things, he perceives Celtic as this wee diddy team he's going to play for for six months before he gets a proper job. Yeah. And you can't, the SPL is still a professional league. You can't go into it with that kind of attitude. Yeah, no, that's and right. That's why it's no work for him. He he probably thinks I'm too good for this. I just have to turn up and I'll, I'll score, and it's not going to happen. Mm. He's he's going to have to either seriously change his attitude or he'll be gone by the end of the season. Mm. That's that's my prediction. I mean, but before luckily, he looks like a player, so if we do punt him, we'll hopefully recoup at least some of the money. Well, fingers crossed. But I mean, I, I personally, I would like to see it working out for him, and he does knuckle down and get on. Oh, with so it. would I. So would I. I mean, I, this is just the pessimist in me. You know, I mean, yeah. I hope he becomes a twenty-five, thirty goal a season man. You know, but yeah. I just don't see it. I mean, Pat, he was, he's, he's had a record, <laughs> albeit with Sporting. Chichon, Chichon, Sporting Chichon. He had a, a one and two goal average with them. Albeit he has he has a pen he was a penalty taker and he scored quite a few of them I believe, but um, I mean the guy the guy has been a proven goal scorer in the past. I think Liam makes a fair point about he's maybe came to Scotland thinking it should be shooting in, and he's found it not quite as as easy as he maybe thought it was going to be. But some of those misses that he, he had last night before he um, awful before he scored his goal. They were, as Jim says, awful. They weren't even. You're expecting the very least to hit the target, but some of the some of the efforts were woeful. Um, it was actually a very good goal he scored. But is this the turning point for Skepovic, in your opinion, or is he going to be a Harold Brat, Mike? Um, I'm not sure about the turning point. I I kind of disagree a little bit, William. I reckon he has been put himself about. I just think it's been one of these guys. He's been fairly desperate to get his goal and. The fact that he's now got it, I mean, who knows if it is if it's going to be a, the turning point. I guess time will time will tell. But um, I, I don't know. I think I personally think that's why they left him on last night. I think he was one of the guys yeah. sort of I'm signaled so out to be to, to, so yeah. To, I think he was kind of signaled out to to basically be taken off. But I think fair use to the guys. I think he was putting himself about and putting himself in those positions to do it. And that's if he is as good a goal scorer as he you know perceives himself to be, then. You know, he's going to get chances with us. Um, I think the thing that's going to go against him is that when we play teams, most not all teams, but most teams in Scotland, is that they just pack the defence. Yeah. So you're playing against you know nine nine defenders. Now, if you're getting the ball wide to guys like you know Wakaso or Teresa Geary and I was going to say Tonev, but he doesn't count. He can't cross the ball. Um, and getting the ball in, then he's up against. At least two defenders. If that's if that's his main strength is the fact that he's trying to get in and get his head on the ball, he's going to be up against two or three guys every single time the ball comes in there. Yeah. So that's I think where his his negatives kind of going to be. So. True, uh, but again, the goal he actually <coughs> scored last night, he was under a bit of pressure from some defenders. That that, that, set, that was a set piece, so that's different because yeah. you normally no more often than not you're man on man. So. But you're Unless actually, you're your defence, which is just uh, zonal, yeah, yeah, fair the old zonal pish, which I'm yeah. not a fan like, of. Like I, I think I, I do see a bit in the guy. I don't necessarily dislike him. I, I mean, when I saw guys like look Pookie for me, almost instantly when I saw him play, I, I it just didn't it didn't work for <laughs> didn't work for me. This guy I, I see a little bit. If you I reckon if you know given enough chances and uh, a little bit of persistence, then he'll do okay. I he likes problem, to show off his teeth, Pat. I think the thing he's up that? against... He does this kind of grimace thing when he misses a chance and he shows off all yeah. these gnashers. Yeah, well, we've seen a few of those. There was a few of them last night. But anyway, I think his problem is that we've got a bit of a folk hero at the moment in terms of good day. Yeah. And the supporters love him and he's he's a bit of a, a character and stuff like that. And that's going to go against Skefovic. And that's why I reckon he will probably struggle for the rest of the year because if fit, then good is going to play. And if things go okay, I mean, what I would like to to see is if we actually end up do getting out of this, you know, the league section, and go to the next stages, is that um, guys like Guidetti says, you know what? Well, because his, his contract's up for renewal, Man City at the end of the next of this season. 
Yeah. So in theory, in January you can sign a pre contract with us. Yeah. So and if that's the case, then yeah, I'd be I'd be banking on someone like him. That's I would rather and I don't think there'd be many Celtic fans would choose Skepovic in your team over Good Eddie. And not no, only that Not but, right now. Not no. right now. But Dyla really? seems to like exactly. playing one one forward. Yeah, which uh, uh, I must admit, I just as a Celtic fan, it just doesn't sit right with me at all. But there's no. there's got to be two strikers. But I think there's there's room for the two of them, in my opinion. Um, and Tony Anthony Stokes, he could play in that kind of uh, George's Samaras type role on the left hand side, cutting in. So I don't think by any manner of means it means that if if one plays, the other doesn't. Um, but, as you said, we'll, we'll find out and see what happens in January. But we've been joined by Jerry, Scottish Socialist Party. I'm... Good evening, Kevin. Good evening, Jerry. How are yes. you? Or should I say not... good afternoon, Jerry? Yes, I should I say comrades, really, after yes, the discussion. <laughs> 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 Jerry, it's great to have you back on, mate. How are you? Kevin, it's been a while. Um, I've, I've you've got... been, have you been a busy man, though, back home? Yeah, well, I mean, to be honest, I've got a new job, and it means that every second... Well, fucking rub it in, why don't you? <laughs> rub it in. <laughs> Settle down, Jerry. Is there any fly-in, fly-outs from uh, <laughs> Western Australia? <laughs> Sadly, it's not as good as that, but it, what it does mean is I get the odd Friday off, so mm. I, I was scratching at the bit when I saw Pat's tweet that it would be on at 11 o'clock this morning. I was furious that it was delayed for so long because I wanted to get my regular listen in, so oh. uh, well done as usual. What, what's going to say, I mean, I think I tweeted this uh, last week. I mean, I know it's a, a football podcast, but I thought it was a fantastic discussion about the, the referendum to, to hear yeah. the passion that you guys uh, displayed and the maturity of the discussion and debate um, you know I, I found it amazing I, I really enjoyed listening to it the, the only thing I would maybe say to, to Pat in particular is you know I, I felt there was a, a fair amount of gloom I think it was Liam as well a fair amount of gloom come out of the discussion I would say that um, you know it, it was hugely disappointing and I admit to shedding a tear for, for the result yeah. but there's been an explosion in interest in politics here in Scotland do you know what I mean I, I think it's almost as if it's unleashed a determination amongst loads and loads of people that we were cheated by the lies in the media what went on in the television and it's I think for a, you know, a big number of people young people in particular it, it seems to me it's become an idea that time has come and that we will not be defeated. I, I, I genuinely think that within a decade, eh, possibly less, then we could be in a situation where, where we get independence. So, you know, I fully understand how you guys felt, but what I would say is, you know, there, there, there's plenty of reason for optimism at this mm -hmm. end, and I, I don't normally say that. I'm, a, I'm an old cynic. Yeah. But, um, you know, keep the heads up, guys. I think there's Good. an incredible campaign <laughs> Probably a campaign the likes of which you guys have never seen when yep. you were in Scotland or since you went to Australia. Yeah. So or Japan. I, I'm optimistic. <laughs> um, and, and come back to last night. I, I was at the, the match last night, and you know, I listened to the discussion there. And you know, one thing that kind of rung true was Pat's discussion about how depressing it is to compared to where we were um, 18 months ago, even. Yeah. The only thing I would I would say is that um, one thing Celtic are very well served in is, is podcasts, not just Hell Hell Media, but uh, Celtic Underground. I, I yeah. listened to a, a brilliant podcast yesterday from uh, Harry Brady, yeah, Guy Lackey Moore, and he did make the point about um, you know Dialers try to introduce a fairly a fairly dramatic change, and and it, it was never something that was. Going going to be happening overnight and he cited to me a, a brilliant example about Germany um, about how German football in 2010 you know I, th I can't remember whether they failed in the World Cup but they kind of did a study and realised that, that the way ahead was to try and move the ball m more quickly 
Yeah. And I think what happened was that the outcome was after four years of working with the clubs and working with the international side that I think the amount of time the individual spent in the ball was reduced from something like 3.4 seconds to one point something seconds. And, you know, I watched, I don't know if any of you saw the Bayern Munich game uh, during the week when they absolutely whipped uh-huh. Roma. I saw, and, the, and, I saw the goals put it that way. Yeah, and I also I watched the Real Madrid game where, um, yeah. where, where they, they, they Liverpool. wiped with Liverpool. Yeah. And it seems to me that the general principle of trying to move quickly, get faster movement, is, is absolutely correct. Because I think much of the criticism of Dyla in the media has been, well, all he's interested in is fitness, you know, cutting out iron brew and cakes and all the rest of it. Mm. But the one thing that that podcast says is he, he's actually looking for more than that it's you know it's this idea of if you're fitter you'll be quicker in your mind yeah. when you're trying to make a pass mm-hmm. you know you reach the end of the game you're far more likely to 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 be successful and i think they made the point uh, harry brady made the point well germany with all their resources already a really good football nation effectively took four years to arrive at the situation where you could say they got it right and managed to win a World Cup. And we're in a situation where we're really only a couple of months into, into a, a new project. Yeah. And there's a lot of fans already saying, look, it's time to abandon this. And for me, we are miles behind. You, Kev, you said we were underdogs in Europe. Yeah. I'm old enough to remember in the 80s, we would take on the likes of, but, you know, I remember Real taking on Real Madrid, Madrid and beat, beating them 2 0, taking on Juventus at Celtic Park. And the truth is, we weren't sitting in. We actually gave these people a right good game of football yeah. and, on many occasions, deserved to win. And, and I was I was over in uh, Spain for the return leg in 1980 and, and Turin in 1981. And again, you know, it was a different Celtic. It was a Celtic that could actually play the game and take the game to the, the opposition. But in recent times, you, we've had to. S- that in because of the sheer the gap in talent and technique and also finance. But to me, this idea that we need to try and move the ball quickly to pass it quickly, um, I think it's I think we need to try and stick with it. Um, I, I did have my doubts last night because obviously, you know, it was a very poor performance. But I think at the end of the day. Um, whilst we've had a lot of disappointing performances and the squad doesn't look great, we're in every competition. Do you know what I mean? Makes and, sense. You know, and Jim, I think it was Jim that made the point there that um, you know we, we, we could expect an upturn in form. So, yeah. again, I think for all there, 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 there's reason for optimism. I think the other thing that I would say is that... Um, I think Harry Brady in an earlier podcast talked about, um, you know, with Martin O'Neill, Neil Lennon. There have been managers more than coaches. You know, what Martin O'Neill in particular managed the first team, didn't have a great interest in those below him. Lennon much the same. But I think one of the, the reasons why they, they went for Dyla was this idea that he, he brought in its, its strong this, this set of, um, I'm not pronouncing that right, but he managed to develop players and yeah. really make talented individuals. And I think the part of the whole uh, idea behind Dyla's appointment is that he, the people that are there now, at the youth setup, he's an all-encompassing coach. And what we will hopefully see in the fullness of time is Lennox Town will be utilised properly and we'll start to do our own and we'll get forwards, midfielders, defenders. But obviously, obviously what we do need to do is succeed in the meantime. So for me, it would be good to get to the last 32 of the Europa League. I th- think we can do well in the leagues in the Cup. And I hope he manages to get through that difficult spell and fans stick with him. And yeah. I think, you know, let's hope that the, the second half of the season gives us a big upturn in our fortunes. Last Saturday maybe could give us cause for optimism. If we can do that in more games than we have been doing, then we can maybe get there in the end, guys. Well, fingers crossed, Jerry. I mean, that that point you made there earlier on about... um, Well, you made several points, Jerry, as you always do so eloquently, mate. But... um, (laughs) We were talking about just before we came, uh, we, ke- we came on on air um, about the academy, um, 
it's something that we were, t- we were maybe going to bring up tonight, so I'm glad you've touched on it because 